th this actually opens up an interesting question. I want both of you to take a minute or two on this, on this first question. Um, there's confusion about Islam in the West on, 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 in many areas. One of the roots of the confusion is that it's very hard to figure out who actually, where the clerical authority resides in Islam. We are in the West trained almost on a Vatican model. There's a pope and the pope says what goes and, and, and then that's what goes. Uh, there's no pope in Islam. And, and what I was hoping you could do is talk about how, uh, I mean this is a subject obviously of many, many scholarly works over hundreds of years, but if you could take a minute and a half, each of you, and talk about, and talk about how power and authority is derived in Islam. Why don't we start with you and then I'll go to, to Dahlia. Well, um, first of all, uh, salam alaikum to the uh, Muslims in the audience. Uh, good morning to the non-Muslims and to the atheists. How the hell are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, I hope there will be more such moments of levity in these proceedings because we are talking about very, very weighty issues, obviously. Uh, Jeff, uh, to your question directly, there's theory and then there's reality. In theory, as you pointed out, you know, Islam was never meant to have a clerical class. In many ways, and I realize that this will rub some people the wrong way, but uh, they're, they're, Islam you know, started off really in a very sort of Protestant mode, though Protestantism came many, many centuries later, having, with, with Muslims having a direct relationship to God. And for all kinds of political reasons, reasons that in fact have corrupted uh, the spirit of Islam, uh, we now are uh, inundated with clerics who uh, call themselves authentic and everybody else inauthentic. Um, the problem, however, with theory is precisely that it is theory, it is not reality. And let me give you a quick explanation of how I've had to take reality into consideration in the work that I do. As many of you know, I'm a reform-minded Muslim and uh, uh, have now a global constituency of younger Muslims, particularly from around the world. And uh, over the last couple of years, um, the biggest uh, question that has come to me through my website is from young Muslims, male and female, who have fallen in love with non-Muslims. Their parents and their imam insist that Islam forbids them from marrying outside the faith. And they come to me in desperation, because that's the only time anybody ever comes to me, in desperation to ask, is this true? Do I really have to give up the love of my life? Because my faith tells me to. Now, the 10th or 11th time that I got this uh, kind of a question, I realized, you know, this is a bigger phenomenon than even I am, am uh, 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 acknowledging. So instead of me merely giving these young people my interpretation, of the Quran, because let's face it, what imam is going to care what a spiky-haired, Western-raised, Muslim-Canadian feminist has to say about the Quran, all right? So uh, instead of you giving them a personal interpretation, I took this question to a progressive imam in the United States who, by the way, had been trained very traditionally in Saudi Arabia and in Syria. And I asked him to exercise Islam's own uh, tradition of independent thinking, known as ijtihad, which we'll get into a little bit later, and reinterpret for a 21st century pluralistic context the very verses that have traditionally been used to prohibit uh, women in particular from marrying outside of Islam. He did exactly that. He came up with a two-page defense of interfaith marriage from an Islamic perspective. I posted it on my website in English, and only six months later, the demand for this document was so high that I've had to now get it translated into 19 more languages, including many European languages for young Muslims living in Europe. So the point here is twofold. One is that you know the internet is certainly making it uh, less difficult to communicate information <clears throat> to uh, a, a global ummah, a, a worldwide nation of Muslims, particularly of a new generation, that they would otherwise not get uh, from their own households or their own mosques. But at the same time, even I've had to contend with the fact and accept the fact that it is you know, the clerics 
who still hold the credibility for many, many parents. And one final point before we turn it over to Dahlia. Just so you know what kind of an impact that has had. When I was in Berlin about a year ago giving a lecture, not even about ijtihad, uh, a group of young uh, Muslim women approached me to say, thank you for posting this document online. We are of marrying age. Our parents are trying to force us into loveless marriages with Muslim men whom we don't know, let alone love. And this document has saved us from this fate. Why? Not only only because you've posted it in Turkish, Arabic, and uh, German, so at least one of those languages our parents will have to admit they understand and read, but also because it's written by an imam. And that was a very strategically important thing for you to do.